Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Wang Yi. I am a cloud software engineer for Intel. I have been working on Starling X project for more than two years. Today, the topic I'm going to share with you is time-sensitive networking enabling on Starling X. Okay, let's start my sharing. Here is the agenda. Firstly, I will brief the concept of time-sensitive networking. Through the introduction, you will have a basic understanding of what TSN is. Secondly, I will introduce how we enabled TSN on Starting X platform. Next, I will share the details about how we verify the TSN functionality we enabled. In the last part, I'm going to discuss the future work about TSN on Starting X. TSN is not a single technology. It is a set of standards developed by the IEEE at 02.1 working group. The TSN standards defined some new functions for Ethernet networking, such as traffic shaping, frame preemption, traffic scheduling, ingress policing, and uh, seamless redundancy, etc. These new functions provide a whole new layer of control for managing Ethernet traffic. For time-sensitive traffic, TSN can guarantee determinism with bounded low latency, low jitter, and uh, extremely low packet loss. Furthermore, TSN can allow non-time-sensitive traffic to be carried through the same network. That means critical and non-critical traffic can coexist in the same network, and TSN still can guarantee the timely delivery of critical traffic. The TSN standards were designed for four aspects, respectively, synchronization, latency, reliability, and resource management. Synchronization means all nodes in a TSN network should share a common understanding of time. Then the behavior of the nodes could be coordinated and scheduled on the same time basis. HPE at 02.1 AS was defined for this purpose. Roughly speaking, the standard at 02.1 AS is a subset of IEEE 1588 standard. 1588 standard is also called Precision Time Protocol. The abbreviation is PTP. With PTP, it is possible to synchronize distributed clocks with an accuracy of less than one microsecond via internet with Ethernet networks. Latency is for deterministic and prioritized packet transmission. TSN has defined a couple of standards for that, such as at 02.1 AV, at 02.1 QBU, QBV, and QCH. Reliability is for robust transmission. There are three standards defined. IEEE at 02.1 CB, QCA, and uh, QCI. The last one is resource management. It, it is for consistent network configuration. TSN has defined a few standards to achieve automatic configuration for a whole TSN network. Real-time transmission services are required by many industries such as industrial automation, transportation, automotive, etc. Industrial Internet of Things is one of the most important user scenarios for starting X. That's why we need to enable TSN 
on Starting X platform. In this page, I'd like to explain a little bit more about the standard at 02.1 QBV. That is one of the test standards we enable on Starting X. The idea of at 02.1 QBV is there are some traffic queues. Packets to be transmitted will fall into one of them according to their QoS priority. Each queue has a gate. The control module called Time Aware Shaper can open close these gates at a specific, a specific point in time. So the Time Aware Shaper can close the gates for non-critical traffic queues while transmitting critical traffic. In this way, the delivery of critical traffic can be guaranteed. Linux already has many support for TSN. In your space, there are some utilities. The package IPR2 includes a set of utilities. For example, the utility IP can be used to create and configure Linux VLAN network. TC can be used to configure QDisk. ETH2 is a utility to configure the behavior of its net network interface cards. Linux PDP is an open source project. It is an implementation of PDP protocol. We can use it to perform time synchronization on Linux platform. In Linux kernel space, there are some software components called QDisk that is QNIN display. From software stack perspective, QDisk is a lower layer in the network stack. It is used to con control traffic uh, such as prioritize schedule and shape, etc. Linux already implemented a couple of QDisks such as Tepro, MQ Pro, CBS, ETF, etc. They implemented different TSN standards. Tepro called Time Aware Priority Shaper. It implemented at 02.1 QBV standard. ETF called Earliest takes time first. It is based on a feature called launch time, provided by a few network interface cards. The idea is we could pre-configure expected transmission time for each packet. Then the hardware will follow the configuration to send packages at a specific time. In this way, we could achieve better determinism. Uh, RGB and IGC are Intel network interface card drivers. They have TSN support. Here is the TSN work we have done on Starting X. We enabled two TSN standards at 02.1 AS and uh, at 02.1 KBV in Starting X card containers. Regarding hardware, we choose Intel i210 network interface card because it has native hardware support for TSN. For software, we use Starting X 4.0 release. Of course, the latest master version is also working. We choose color container as our first step to enable TSN on Starting X rather than generic container. The reason is, when we started this work, Starting X were using CentOS 7.6. The kernel version is 3.18. The version is kind of low. It doesn't have some TSM features we required. A card container is more like a virtual machine. It has its own kernel image. This gives us the chance 
to customize a kernel image with the required TSM features. For kernel image, we choose Ubuntu 20.04 as the best image. We also installed required TSM utilities into it. Choosing Ubuntu 20.04 rather than a lower version such as 18.04 is to get the latest TSM utilities, which support the TSM features we required. 18.04 doesn't meet our requirements. To enable TSN in color containers, here is what we have done on Dynamics platform. We made a customized Linux kernel with TSN support for color containers. We also built a container image with the TSN stack. We, we figured out a solution to pass through I210 network interface card into color containers. We also figure out a solution for time synchronization in color containers. The last one is we enable the TEPRO and the ETF to kill disk in color containers. Due to time limitation, I don't have time to go deep into each item. So if you are hoping to learn more details, you could refer to the document in Starting X community. Below is the link. In order to verify the TSM functionality we enabled on Starting X platform, we set up an experimental TSM network. As shown in the picture, the TSM network consists of one TSM switch and four nodes. The TSN switch is a generic PC with a control TSN switch card. The TSN switch card is a PCIe card with four 1 gig Ethernet ports. It is based on Intel Cyclone V FPGA and it can support at 02.1 AS and at 02.1 QBV. The four nodes are all in Intel Hardisk Kanya Nux. It has one Intel one Intel I210 NIC. One of the four nodes were installed with Starting X Simplex. The rest three nodes were installed with Ubuntu. Here is the software architecture for TSN verification. The left part is the Starting X node. On the Starting X platform, we created a card container by using the container image with TSN stack we created. Then we pass through the Intel i210 NIC of the host into the card container. In the card container, we did, uh, did time synchronization and enabled to kill disks, TEPRO and ETF, by utilizing these TSN utilities. A small program, TSN Sender, was running in the container. It periodically sent a packet to the Ubuntu on the right side. In the Ubuntu, we did time synchronization too, and a TSN receiver program was running on the Ubuntu platform. It received the packet from the card container and dumped the time information for later analysis. The Ubuntu node is the receiver side. We don't need to enable QDisks. Doing time synchronization is enough for the test. The time synchronization across the whole TS network is a little complex. We used five steps to achieve it. In the first step, we synchronize the, the system clocks of the TSN switch and the Starling X node with an external clock by NTP protocol. In the second step, we, we synchronize the, the PTP clock of the, of the TSN switch with its system clock. In the third step, 
we synchronize the PDP clocks of the node 1 and the node 2 with, with the PDP clock of the TSM switch. In the first step, we synchronize the system clock of the node 2 with its PDP clock. In the last step, we synchronize the system clock of the card container with its PDP clock. Through the five steps, the three components, the TSM switch, node 1 and node 2, are on the same time basis. We didn't perform time synchronization on node 3 and node 4, because in our test, we didn't use them for critical uh, traffic transmission. We have three performance indicators to measure the TSM performance. It is to prove TSM is functional on Starling X platform. As shown in the top figure, it is a complete period. Interval start represents the time when the, uh, when the interval starts. TX wake up uh, represents when the sender program wake up from sleep state. TX program uh, is the time the sender program calls the socket function to send a packet. TX kernel net schedule represents the time we preset when a packet should be sent by the hardware. Rx, uh, Rx hardware is the time when the NIC on the receive side receives the packet. Rx program is the time the receive program receives the packet by the socket function in the user space. All the time information was collected by the test program, the TSM sender and the TSM receiver. Based on them, we can calculate the three indicators. The first one is scheduled times. It is the interval between interval start and the RX hardware. It can indicate the determinism uh, TSM technology brings to the system. RT application latency is the interval between interval start and the TX program. It indicates the real-time performance of the OS system. It doesn't depend on TSM technology. TSM network jitter uh, is the jitter of the scheduled times. It shows the variance of the scheduled times. It is also a determinism indicator of, the, of TSM performance. In the test, we set the period as 2 milliseconds. One packet is sent by a per cycle, and the scheduled time, uh, that is the time when a packet should be sent within a period by the hardware, is set as 1,250 microseconds. During the test, uh, around 10,000 packets were sent from the starting X node to the Ubuntu node. The right figure is the test result. The top figure is the scheduled times. As you can see, the scheduled times for all packets are all uh, are around 1,253 microseconds. The variance is very small. It shows that determinism performance is very good. Let me explain a little more about the value 1,253 we got. Roughly speaking, it is composed of two parts. 1,250 microseconds comes from the scheduled time we set, and a little more than 3 microseconds is spent on the link. 
from the starting technique where the TSN switch to the NIC of the Ubuntu node. The bottom left figure is IT application latency. The value varies in a wide range from, as you can see, from 3 microseconds to, uh, to 758 microseconds. Since we didn't use IT kernel for both Starling X host platform and the car containers, the result is expected. This performance can be improved by utilizing an uh, IT kernel. The bottom left figure is the TSN network jitter. You can see a very, very sharp peak. It shows the variance of the schedule time is extremely small, less than 100 nanoseconds. As I know, in some critical industrial user scenarios, the jitter of the schedule time is required to be less than one, micro, uh, one microsecond. Our test result shows that TSM technology can meet the requirement. The second test is a stress test. We, we, we remain the same configuration for the first test. In addition, we launched a iPerf program on Node 3. The iPerf program sent massive traffic to Node 4 through the TSN switch. We use this way to emulate non-critical traffic. The massive non-critical traffic and the time-sensitive traffic coexisted in the same network. On the right side, you can see the iPerf sent data to the network at a rate of around 956 megabits per second. The ports of the TSN switch and the NAC are both 1 gigabits. So 956 megabits is almost the maximum rate we can achieve. The data rate of the iPod receive site is around 371 megabits not 956 megabits. The reason is we enabled at 02.1 QBV on the TSN switch. Uh, so 40% uh, time slice was allocated for IPOF traffic. On the left side, you can see we got a similar result with previous test. This test result proves that TSN can allow critical and non-critical traffic coexist in a same network, and TSN still can guarantee timely delivery of critical traffic. Though we already enabled TSN in starting card containers, we still have much TSM work to do on starting at the platform. For example, we need to support TSM in generic containers. And the uh, IT performance is not good, we need to optimize it. And, can, and the currently, we config the TSM network manually. In the future, we need to enable automatic configuration for production. Another interesting topic is how to share the TSN capability among containers. Given the number of TSN NICs uh, on a host is limited. But now we only have a recipe for the integration work. In the future, we need to do further integration with the Starling X platform. That's all for my sharing. Thank you for your time.